<laughs> Messed y'all up with that Louis Farrakhan video. Mm -hmm. No one can deny that Louis Farrakhan wears suits, uses the Queen's English eloquently, and doesn't practice ghetto or hood culture. I know a lot of y'all are like, oh, he got me, he got me, he got me. Because some of you even sit in the comments like, okay, that was a good example. That was a good example. So what I'm about to get into is what is dominant black culture and another shining example of someone that was extremely successful by not practicing nor participating in the hood culture. So there was a few people who had a few questions like, what is black culture? I don't know why y'all playing around. Black culture is the dominant black culture. In Atlanta, during this holiday weekend, we had 31 shootings. They were all black folks. In Chicago, there was 87 shootings. They were all black folks. Where are the protests? Where are the marcher? Where are the black lives people? So if one white cop kills a black man, it is a reason to set the country on fire. But when another black person kills another black person, eh, that's okay. Where are the protests? Where's the anger? Where's, cause see, these 31 shootings, cause I looked for Atlanta, I did not look for Chicago but they all were in the hood and they were all black folks. These 31 shootings and five people died and a little child died due to black culture, the dominant black culture, which is steeped in the hoods and is steeped in the belief that racism will not allow me to be successful. I, you know, this racism, white man got his foot on my neck. I can't be successful because of systematic white supremacy. Really? Let me introduce you to Reginald Lewis, who created the leverage. Let me, let me go ahead and say this. He created the leverage buyout, a tactic that is used by Carl Icahn, Stanley Druckenmiller, and a whole bunch of other rich billionaire white guys. This brother created this tactic. This brother created this financial system and structure to take over a company. He was well-educated. He was a Kappa. He came from a good family. He did not practice black culture. And in 1969, he married an Asian woman. In 1969, when people were marching on the streets for their civil rights, he was like, I'm too busy building this company, man. I don't have time for that. 1969, went to law school, became a billionaire, and he never put it in his head that he could not succeed nor achieve. Not once did he have this mess up in his head. Cause see, here is one of the most corrosive, harmful, and dis debilitating forms of black culture is because you are black, you cannot succeed. That's the only reason that you don't have money. That's the only reason that you're not doing well is because you are black and the world is against you. This is a predominant mindset of black culture. Tone talks, talks about it all the time because we, he likes to talk about the wealth gap on this channel. And someone has put up this. It was really interesting because I've talked about this at links. There are white people who live in abject poverty. The wonderful whites of West Virginia. I keep mentioning that. And now I found a group of people who are doing this clog dancing in the Appalachian mountains. These mountain people who are poor white trash. See, this is the separation between the white folks who have and the white folks who don't have and poor white trash. But once again, Reginald Lewis, created a financial structure 
that enabled for him to create a billion dollar empire. He did this, I believe in the 70s or the 80s, I have to look, at a time when black folks weren't supposed to be able to do things like that. See, I'm, I'm about to tell you something about Reginald Lewis, Louis Farrakhan, and other dominant black men. Let's get this 100% straight. Reginald Lewis was a dominant black man. He was not a wuss, he was not a wimp, he was not a coward, he did not, he was not submissive in any shape, fashion, or form. And we're gonna talk about that because we have a lot of black men who are extremely feminine and very submissive and all up in their feelings. Reginald Lewis was a dominant black man with a dominant mindset. Oh, I can go on Wall Street, I can do this. Yeah, I can play these games. Yeah, I can, I can compete. He had it in his mind. A.G. Gaston was a dominant black man. He had it in his mind he could compete and he did. And he's, cause see, one of the things that you have to understand, what separates a Reginald Lewis from the average black man who is steeped in black culture is attitude. The dude married an Asian chick in 1969. Remember the Lovings, where the Supreme Court in the rule that interracial couples could get married? This was just a few years before he married this woman. Reginald Lewis was like, I like it, I want it, we gonna do this. I don't care. Sam Cooke was another dominant black man who owned his masters before anyone else did. One of the reasons he ended up dead. See, there is a certain genetic code that creates these dominant black men. Reginald Lewis grew up in a traditional nuclear family household. He did not be up in the bottle, up in the club popping bottles. You know, Reginald Lewis was working. He was working on his business. He was working on his family. He was working. He was not looking to play play. You know, Reginald Lewis wasn't for play play. There is a, this, uh, this YouTube skit where I ain't for play play. See, Reginald Lewis was hardworking, dedicated, and he got results because he did not practice black culture. He did not engage in it. Reginald Lewis was like the Cosby family before the Cosby family. And I keep telling y'all, y'all keep wanting to argue with me. It's like, hey, you know, Louis Farrakhan is black coach. No, Louis Farrakhan isn't. No, he isn't. Every time you see Louis Farrakhan, he's in a suit. He's well-spoken, very articulate, married to the same woman, raising his, he is not practicing black culture. Black culture is single mothers. Now, I will go ahead and nod that many, many white women are becoming single mothers now. And this is why they, from a political standpoint, they've stopped mentioning single mothers. Remember when Reagan or Bush uh, was talking about the welfare mother? They can't do that anymore because they would be talking about too many of the white women because 42% of the kids in America are born out of wedlock. And the largest demographic that we have in America is white women. It's the largest single demographic, white women. There's like 120 million of them, 120, 130 million of them. And it's the largest group of women who have children. It's the largest group of women who have children out of wedlock. Now, let's talk about what happens to black pe white people who start practicing black culture. Remember in the 1960s, I think it was Jesse Hems, a senator or a congressman from North Carolina who said that if we do not stop this problem that's growing in the black community with these single mothers, it's gonna hit our community. And guess what it did? He predicted this years before it happened. Why? Because low base culture, and this is what black culture is, is low base, low intellect, 
low resistance, the path of least resistance culture is very seductive. Here's something else. You could Google this. There are many black men that you hit the internet that have 20 to 31 kids. And these guys can continue to meet women, have sex with them and have more kids. It's like, yeah, he got 20 kids. So what? I'm going to get some of that. Man, it must be something special about his magic stick. See, one of the issues that happens in black culture is the mismanagement of wombs. Womb management is non-existent in a dominant black culture environment. Oh, I'm, I'm 16. I'm going to have sex. I'm going to get married. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this child. Oh, two, three kids before you're 21 years old. This is common in black culture. Go ahead and go ahead and get mad and throw stuff at the computer screen. I don't care because I'm telling you the truth. And this was not black culture in the 60s. This corrosive level of culture is something that occurred in the 70s and the 80s in the 90s. In the 60s, having a child out of, in the 60s, there were more white women who had children out of wedlock than black women. This is a statistical fact. So what changed? Now, some of y'all are gonna like this because we're gonna go back to the systematic restriction for single young black women, they were told that if you don't have a man in the house, we're going to give you this money. We're going to give you these stamps. We're going to give you this government cheese. And they fell for it. And this created a crazy, a crazy generational environment of having kids, not having a man, and going on government assistance. You have black families that the great grandma was on government assistance. The grandmother was on government assistance. The daughter's on government assistance. And this created this environment of lack. This created this environment, a lack of progression. This created this environment because the men, remember, Reginald Lewis was a dominant black man. And essentially, dominant black men have been bred out of the black community. I know that that's crazy, but from a systematic point of racism, dominant, leading, capable, strong black men have been bred out of the community due to the prolific, the pro proficiency, well, prolific conduct of single mothers. And these men have been socialized to be feminine. And there is a dearth of dominant black men because, you know, with disruptive male, I was telling dudes, if you become a dominant man, the world is your oyster. Because back in the day, we're going to go in the 60s and the 50s. Remember the Freedom Riders? This was a group of dominant black men that picked up weapons to protect the civil rights protesters. See, the black community from the 60s, 50s, 40s, and 30s is radically different than the black community of the 70s, of the 80s, of the 90s, and today. There were more men. There were more strong, dominant men in the black community. And this right here is one of the reasons that we have the dominant ghetto hood black culture. Remember this young man who actually murdered his mother so he can get her money, so he can go to the mall and throw cash up in the air? He was in Chicago. Uh, it's a story. You can Google it. This young man actually killed his mother who spoiled him rotten. Spoiled him rotten so he can get the insurance money, so he can go out and pop money and throw money and be a big man. He saw... The barrier to his success was his mother being alive. See, this is the type of socialized animal that has been created when the dominant black man was pushed out the household. This is the type of animal that has been created. 
this is the type of stuff I get in the comments. Like, you know, there's a lot of you who ride with me, who agree with me, who like, okay, he's telling the truth. It's a hard truth, but he's telling the truth. You guys are good to go. But there is a submissive, feminine type of black dude that will co-opt and deny and scream and whine and go on about, well, Farrakhan's black culture. Farrakhan is the antithesis of black culture. Farrakhan doesn't represent anything that's part of black culture. Farrakhan represents black people. Farrakhan protests and talks kindly because you will never hear Louis Farrakhan say anything bad about black people because he realizes that's how he draws power. Just like Donald Trump will not say anything about racist or white supremacy. He will not say anything because he knows that is part of his voting block and that's part of his power. He won't say anything against him. And Louis Farrakhan realizes and he has managed to use the dominant black culture to his benefit, even though he doesn't practice it. Louis Farrakhan is a very smart guy. Reginald Lewis was a very smart guy. And one of the things that Reginald Lewis did is he lived his life from the position of a dominant black man, not a submissive one. This is a very, very important part. If you look at the Malcolm X, you look at Martin Luther King, look at A.G. Gaston, you look at Earl Graves, you look at Reginald Lewis, they were all dominant, brave black men. And this is one of the things that is at odds with black culture. Take the Black Lives, Mo black Lives Matter organization. Go to their website and it will say that they're about creating strong, friendly families and they have language on the website where they're talking about homosexuals and trans people. It's on their website. They're not hiding their agenda. It is nothing about the bodies of the dead black men that they've used to promote their organization. On their website, they have language talking about homosexuals and trans folks and families. This is the antithesis of a strong, dominant black man. A strong, dominant black man is never gonna wear a dress. A strong, dominant black man is not gonna act submissive. This is the antithesis of anything that a strong, dominant black man holds dear. So the Black Lives Matter movement is deeply rooted in submissive black culture. And right now, with the killing of the murder of George Floyd, they've been able to expand their message worldwide. And people are following this group and they don't even know what they stand for. They're not about strong black men. That's the last thing that they're about. Go to their website, check it out. It's directly on their website. And also, one of the things that you have to look at during the civil rights movement, the civil rights movement was started and led by strong dominant black men. This Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter movement was put together by lesbians. See where I'm going? Submissive, hood, crazy, unreckless, emotionally, unregulated behavior is the root of the dominant black culture as evidenced by these 31 people black who were shot here in Atlanta over the holiday weekend as evidenced by the 87 black people shot in Chicago over the holiday weekend. We just go, you know, because essentially when you have a dominant, strong black man in the household, he's gainfully employed. He does not have time to be out at 3 a.m. in the morning toting the gun, shooting up other black folks. He's at home sleep because he's tired from working. And this is one of the things that I've been talking about on this channel for the last 10 years, the power of work. There are many people, and this, this is another issue with the dominant black culture, they don't want to work. 
don't want to work, don't want to do anything, don't, don't want to build, don't want to create. They, they seek comfort. They seek the club. If they win the lottery, they will lose that money so quickly because they will seek comfort. When you have an intelligent, dominant black man, amazing things happen. This is where you get the Reginald Lewis's. This is where you get the Louis Farrakhan's. This is where you get the Earl Graves. This is where you get the A.G. Gaston's. Amazing and powerful things happen. But when you have submissive, feminine black men, and then you have emotionally unregulated black women with no goals, no purpose, just out here living. Do you know that 15% of the population, and this is the overall population, doesn't have the mental facilities to hold certain type of jobs? The most they can do is be a janitor or something. That's 15% of the population. Well, with this Rona, we're gonna add probably another 20% to these people that literally we have no purpose for. They're here in society, their, their, their families love them, but from a social standpoint, we have no purpose for them, we have no jobs for them, and we're gonna have more and more people who are gonna occupy that. And this is what happens to these people. It's like the adults that move into Big Mama's house I'm an adult. Even though you don't have the ability to live under your own power, you want to be treated with respect. You want to come and go as you please, but you're living in Big Mama's house. It's about Big Mama's rules. Big Mama needs her sleep. You can't be coming in at two or three o'clock in the morning in Big Mama's house. Because Big Mama, she, she sleeps, she's a light sleeper. You, you, you are, you're disturbing Big Mama's sleep. And this is the dominant black culture because I remember when the Cosby Show came on, I, I had friends who were talking about there are no black folks like that. Now, I want you to think, why would black folks be saying that there were no black folks like that? Because the dominant black culture was hood, ghetto, and poor. Here's some news flash. There have always been rich black people. Do you understand that free black men used to have, wear gold teeth to represent that they were free? That's where the gold teeth thing came from. A lot of folks don't know that. There has always been a segment of the black population that has been rich, well off, and they behave differently. Like, they made the moves like Reginald Lewis. They didn't behave like the dominant black culture because behavior is how you get your results. You know, I don't care all this stuff about I'm a good person. You know, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't really care about all that. It is your behavior that gets your results. It is your behavior that moves the needle. It is your behavior that creates outcomes. And the dominant black culture has a lot of bad behaviors. And, I'll, and this is something else too. The dominant black culture will fight with you. Like I remember it was a, a, a live stream that O'Shea was doing and it had Anthony Lung, Anthony, he's the conservative black dude, Anthony L something and some other people and they were talking about black folks and culture. And Anthony was talking about how people used to mock the way that he spoke. And then the people who were steeped in the dumb, I, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. You could talk to any progressive black person that grew up around hood type people and they have recollections of being mocked for the way that they spoke. It's common in the dominant black hood culture. But during this live stream, they were like, well, that didn't happen. Yes, it did. And you know, and there was other people who chimed in and pushed in on it. And it, it got a little heated because see, the dominant black culture recognizes that when it's put in the spotlight, the dominant black culture is like a roach. At night, 
It's all around. It's all around. But you shine some sunlight on it. Ooh, man. Nah, man. We ain't like that. We don't act like that. I, like sunlight is the best disinfectant there is. But go ahead. Do a little research on Reginald Lewis. See what it's like. See what the results of a dominant black man can get you. See the results of the older black culture. Because like I said, in the 60s, black culture was nothing like this. It, it was about pride. It was about respect. You would have the poorest families. When they came out, they had clean clothes on. You would go to their house. It would be neat and orderly. The yard, the grass would be cut. And these people were poor. They didn't even have indoor plumbing. But they lived a proper, respectful life. This is something I picked up in Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field. And it's true. You could go to the poorest neighborhoods where people are at home all day and you see trash everywhere. Everywhere. The black community, the poor thing used to be like that. They picked up the trash. They kept it neat and orderly. But what has happened is this apathy of not caring about the community, not caring about your environment. When I lived in the West End, there was literally trash everywhere. And these, the majority of these people were home during the day. So understand, if you want to escape the dominant black culture, your behavior must be different. It must be different. If you want to be like Reginald L. Lewis, you've got to be hardworking, practical, and live your life a certain way because it's the behaviors that gets the results. You want good results, you need better behavior. If you want to keep getting trash hood results, just keep staying hood. Just keep saying good. Because you know, there, there, there's, because this is one of the things that black culture, the dominant black culture tries to do is co-opt something good because there were many people who were saying that the Cosby show was black culture. Now, the Cosby show was part of the black body politic, but the Cosby show was not typical black culture as evidenced by the number of people who were saying, I don't know no black folks like this. That's just proof that the Cosby show wasn't black culture. He was a doctor, she was an attorney, they raised their kids, they sent their children to college. It was the American dream. So this was your black culture update today. So that's all I got for you. If you want to escape black culture, and I went ahead and I fixed the links below. So go ahead and get 30 days to 2,500 if you don't have no money. In the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success if you don't have no money. And if you want to start a business and you have additional funds, go ahead and book a consulting session. And I will talk to you guys in this next video right here.